Uh, hello, my name is Eduardo, and this is my co-founder, Xu Yun. And we are Sea Drone. And we make professional subsea robots to automate underwater inspections. But before we talk about robots, let's talk about fish production. So humans have been fishing our oceans for thousands of years. And due to modern efficient techniques and high demand, we have exploited 85% of our global fish stocks. But, and this is why fish farms like this one in Baja are essential. 50% of the fish that we consume today is farm raised. But maintaining and inspecting a farm is extremely challenging. At 60%, structural failures are the single biggest cause of fish escapes. However, inspecting these farms, again, is very difficult. There are primarily submerged structures, right? And there's two primary things that need to be inspected. There's the mooring lines or rope that hold these nets to the seabed, and there's also the nets themselves that divers go down every day to inspect. And aquaculture is projected to be a $200 billion market by 2020, which means that there will be millions of cages that need daily inspection. And right now, the problem is that farm managers only have one solution, which is commercially trained divers. Now these divers can be extremely expensive, costing $1,000 a day. And for safety, divers always dive in pairs, so double that cost. Now, absolutely the worst part of all this is that when these divers come out of the water, they're taking notes on paper. Now, all this information is, this method is very imprecise, and often critical information in the structures is missing. So, and actually even worse is that the farm managers still have to transcribe all these paper notes onto digital documents that they have to submit to regulatory agencies. So there is a huge opportunity to make fish farming both safer and more efficient all at once. And that's why, judges, <laughs> we're building Sea Drone, which is, thank you. Um, so Sea Drone, uh, we're taking lessons learned from Aerial Drone to make an underwater robot that is very intuitive to pilot. It's very easy to maintain. It costs a fraction of existing solutions. So here are a few specs. So Sea Drone only weighs five kilograms, so it's extremely portable. Now, we've designed Sea Drone from the ground up with uh, very easy to replace thrusters, and it has a gimbal camera with a 200 degree vertical field of view like you would find in an aerial drone. And one of the coolest parts about Sea Drone, it actually can hold its ground in very strong ocean currents. So now to talk about how a farm manager would use Sea Drone, here is my co-founder Xu Yun. Hi, I'm Xu Yun. Today I'm the fish farm operator. So let me show you uh, how Sea Drone can help my work. Can you help me to switch to, yes. So now they say we already dropped the sea drone into the water and we turn on the app. So now I'm ready to pilot the sea drone. So I can move forward, backward. And then the cool thing is I can immediately know what kind of the inspection tax I have today. I need to inspect the anchor one, anchor two, uh, anchor three, net one, net two. So let's start with the anchor one. Let's press here, go back to navigation and pilot the sea drone. And when we reach the anchor one, we take the photo or take the video. And then we go back, the photo already automatically stored to the right place. In the meantime, I can make some comment that to tell that, oh, it's, it's okay and everything's fine. And every, every uh, thing I inspect, I can fill up the entire form. So the cool thing is, I just need to press one button then I can upload the entire inspection data to our cloud-based service. On the farm manager side, he can immediately see the global information of the entire fish farm. He can even check the detail of the fish farm. Say, oh, okay, he can review the previous inspection data, uh, current inspection summary. He can even just one click and file the entire report. So since the c provide provides the, uh, better data, so the farm manager can easy to make a better decision. So right now, let's see how we pilot the c in the real fish farm. Which 
to another. Oh, oh. sorry, go back. Okay, so what you are watching is our pilot study in Baja California in Mexico. So uh, the operator is operating the seizure and to follow the net, taking the photo, taking the video, catch all the uh, sensor data. Uh, in the meantime, the seizure is also very good uh, in spite of uh, the morning line. And since the C-drone can go to the 100 meter depth, it's also very good to inspect the things in the deep water, especially like the, the anchor or uh, those things that the uh, diver cannot easy to reach. So even though we're starting with a very exciting market of aquaculture, there's other opportunities. So we've been contacting with people that need underboat inspection and that could use something similar. There's al also distributors that are dying to have a low-cost solution that has a higher technology in oil and gas. There's also other un under type of underwater infrastructures like dams and bridges that need to be inspected regularly. So we're very excited to be releasing our Seedrum product line today. So we have our Seedrum Explorer, which is the basic model that Utelo operate. We have the inspector, which comes with the subscription service like Shujun introduced. And we have a developer for all those nerds like us out there that just want to hack an underwater robot and use it for research. Um, so with that, we want to thank you very much for taking the time. And please come and talk to us at our booth. Thank you. That was pretty cool, right? <laughs> All right, Minerva, I saw you were actually snapping some photos. <coughs> pretty, mm -hmm. not bad, right? Not kind of cool? Yeah, this is, this is way, way cool. Um, in, in, you know, uh, and this replaces, um, you know, a person, as you said, who's, who's actually inspecting this. But what about maintenance and, you know, fixing these things? Because it's not like there's a ton of sea drone mechanics out there. Yeah. So when you start getting a lot of these in the market, how would you address that? Well, actually, that's actually one of our main innovations. So if you look at quadcopters, what they've managed to do is two primary things. So they managed to lower the price point and made the entire system very easy to use and maintain. So what we've done is actually instead of knowing how to replace these mechanical parts and fix them, we made them replaceable. So our, for example, our thrusters, uh, you grab them and throw them away. You don't need to know anything that's going on inside. So we lower the price in such a way that, we, that now you can do that. Just a follow up, how long do you expect them to last? Um, so that's a very good question. So we actually, um, we're, we have run tests in the ocean and we're running them for over 500 hours. Our competition, not gonna name them right now, but they can only run their thrusters for 50 hours and they have to replace mechanical seals. So we're using brushless motors that you find in these aerial drones and found a way to waterproof them. How much does it, how much does it cost? So the, the uh, product range, uh, the cost uh, range, so for Explore is starting about 2,500 and we're going down up to 35. However, the inspector is kind of our, our uh, number one uh, uh, robot and that one's uh, around the $3,000 range. Of course, we have that sort of subscription service. And, and by comparison, when I'm in Baja hiring two guys to go scuba dive for 20 minutes, how much does that cost me? Um, actually, Baja, that's, it's not that expensive. Oh. So right now, the reason we're actually doing that pilot study is just for proximity. And uh, the farm managers there are extremely open to tech and they're very helpful. Uh, but actually, biggest markets for us is actually Canada, uh, UK, Japan, and, and actually even Chile, because they, they still have to send divers in uh, extreme depths that are very dangerous. And they actually have a lot of fatalities every year just doing this, this, these jobs. I noticed there was a tether. Is there an untethered uh, autonomous option? Well, that's another good question. Actually, we are working on that. Um, so for the, the tethered version, is that's the one that we're launching today. That's primarily for uh, these deeper uh, inspections where divers cannot go. Our untethered version, um, and we're working on this, uh, and his background is on and SLAM. So uh, we're actually creating a map. So we, you throw the robot into the net, and it operates kind of like a Roomba. So it goes around, it does a spiral pattern, and we actually create a map that now the farm manager can view. Yeah, I don't know. You yeah, so that one's that. untethered. Got it. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned you do have some direct competitors. Are there other indirect previous submarine type vehicles before drone technology was implied this way? Did you be competing against? I assume it's cost prohibitive, but. Yeah, what so are the actually, the, well, the, the hard part for us is actually. Not necessarily, we're, we're not looking so much at the competitors. Um, 
as, because what we're really focusing on is making the best robot and, and lowering the threshold of operation. So right now, there's a job title called an ROV pilot, and there's a ROV maintenance, right? So if we're making the robot, so you don't need to maintain it, and we're lowering the threshold of operation like you have with aerial drones. So now, you know, uh, some, somebody with less skill can operate these, and we're, that's what we're expecting will expand the market. Are there other markets other than fishing that you'll be going after initially, or even what would be your next market? Um, so because there is an existing market for these type of robots, uh, we're looking into uh, using these distribution channels that already exist. And they're primarily selling to oil and gas and to municipalities to inspect these underwater structures. The reason we're starting with aquaculture is because it's a newer industry that's growing very fast, and the existing companies they're not keeping up, they're not fast enough. The robots they design, they, they're not designed right for aquaculture. So now we've been able to make a robot that fits very well into their requirements. Jonathan, did you have a question? Yeah, just, just to give you some brief context, I've been fishing once in my life. I got motion sickness, I threw up everywhere, and the people <laughs> who I was riding in the boat with were so mad at me, they made me swim back to shore. So, <laughs> so take this with a grain of salt, but I'm, I'm just curious. You mentioned in the beginning it's a $200 billion market. How yeah. much of that is directly related to what you guys are doing. Yeah, like, so it's actually, uh, in the so a rough estimate for four to six percent of that uh, is being used on inspection. Um, yeah, so on the throwing up, don't feel bad. Uh, we've done this trip several times to Baja, and this guy is very good at not throwing up, but I'm the, I'm the one that's, they actually probably made this little special spot on the boat for me, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. At least they didn't make you swim back to shore. <laughs> All right, great, well, I think we're out of time, so give it up one more time for Thank Sea you. Drone. And they, like I said, they are the final startup in this session. So one last round of applause for our awesome judges. And uh, we're going to go backstage. They're going to deliberate, and we'll be back in a few minutes with more startups.